Um, yes, um, today I'd like to focus on the human rights of indigenous Buddhist women in Asia. But of course, sitting here in Hawaii, we cannot forget the human rights abuses against the Hawaiian people. Uh, someone this morning mentioned Mauna Kea and the, the idea of sacred sites and how they have been abused and have thus eroded the identities of indigenous people cannot be forgotten. So this links um, colonialism, religion, uh, and um, economic um, degradation, this domination, and so forth. Um, in the past 50 years, efforts to bring women into the mainstream of human society have accelerated. There have been great gains uh, due to the courage and conscientious efforts of both women and men. But unfortunately, the idea of equal rights remains a dream for many women. Um, in, in most societies, outdated attitudes about women's nature and potential continue to keep women at a disadvantage politically, economically, educationally, and in religion. Um, gender equality is a key principle of the United Nations Declaration of Hu Human Rights and Resolution 1325, but Gender discrimination continues in all human societies. The failure to adequately educate one half of the world's population reflects this discrimination, leading to enormous human suffering for one half of the world's population, women and children. Indigenous peoples in the Chittagong Hill Traps of Bangladesh, for example, and the indigenous peoples and former untouchables of India face multifaceted discrimination and deprivation, and women are the most vulnerable among them. Um, indigenous women confront discrimination not only due to their gender, but also due to their lower socioeconomic status and ethno-religious identity. So in recent years, gender-based violence has really spun out of control among indigenous women and many human rights violations occur which never make the papers. Women can be shot dead in these cultures and it never makes any newspaper, right? So um, religious traditions that shape human uh, society's attitudes towards women and also women's attitudes towards themselves um, give mis mixed me messages. The world's religions assert that women and men have equal potential. Uh, whether for liberation or in the sight of God, however we frame it. But social realities um, reveal a stark contradiction to those high ideals. Women continue to lack equal representation in social, political, and religious institutions. This is crucial. For many, the failure of the world's religions to live up to their professed ideals not only exposes their lack of social responsiveness to the needs of human society, but it's also hypocritical. In today's troubled world, humanity's greatest hope is that a critical mass of the world's population will wake up and reject the images that make them willing slaves to power, money, violence, and greed. Global corporations, governments, and human religious institutions will only change when people wake up and demand that they do so. So um, compassionate individuals have a responsibility to wake up and speak out and try to help correct these social injustices. What alternatives or remedies do the Buddhists offer? Similar to other religions, the Buddhist path leads to a better future life and the possibility of liberation from suffering for those who practice virtue. It may be argued that women are disadvantaged in the pursuit of virtue, however, since expectations for women are generally limited to domestic roles or glamour, neither of which guarantees well-being in the afterlife or progress on the path to liberation. Yet, if women reject these expectations and dedicate their lives to religious pursuits in instead, they often find their options circumscribed. Women are often completely unrepresented in religious institutions, including Buddhist institutions. So we have to look at that, right? It's here that Buddhism fails to deliver for women. 
The promised rewards of religious practice are the same as for women as for men, but the means of obtaining those rewards are seriously circumscribed for women and often off limits altogether. I'm referring to the full ordination. Uh, which is the case in other religions as well. In denying equal opportunities to women, Buddhist institutions come into direct conflict with human rights. I mean, if religious um, equality is a human right and women don't have equal opportunities for ordination, then they're being denied a human right. So, um, this contradiction is not only an enormous disappointment for women who have come to expect better of Buddhist institutions, it's also an international embarrassment if Buddhist institutions perpetuate these inequalities. In general, uh, the term human rights denotes that human beings possess certain fundamental rights and freedoms. Um, and these are typically regarded as among the most basic. Religious rights are considered among the most basic of human rights. So if Buddhists don't make some changes and try to um, make equal opportunities for women, they'll certainly go down on the wrong side of history. Um, given equal rights, women promise to become pillars of the world's women or wisdom traditions. Uh, bringing many benefits to human society. So recognizing re women's religious rights is not only a matter of social justice, it's a matter of common sense. So I thought I would like to show a few slides because there is one, an, another embarrassing case, which is the fact that the treatment of the Rohingya in, in Burma or Myanmar in any case, uh, this embarrassing incident is the oppression of Muslims in Myanmar. And of course, there are many historical reasons to explain this oppression. But, um, and I, I think this points to the importance of education in understanding human rights around the world. We need to educate ourselves a lot more, especially about indigenous people's rights and how they're being abused. In different parts of the world, they rarely get much press time. We really have to dig to find any information about the people of the Chittagong Hill Tracks, for example, and who had ever heard of the Rohingya people until this oppression in, in Myanmar began. So, um, of course, um, these struggles go back generations, centuries actually, often originating with colonialism. And that's the case in, um, in Myanmar, in Burma, with the domination of the British who privileged certain peoples over others. Um, and so bringing in um, laborers from other countries who then make their home there but are not recognized as citizens of that country. And this causes many, many problems down the line. Um, there is also the case that Rakhine State, you can see it actually on this map, um, where um, it's a very fertile region. It's also a conduit for Chinese products getting to seaports. So there's an economic factor to this picture as well. Oh, oh okay, here we go. Now you can see the Buddha, a Burmese Buddha. Um, and you can see the traditional lifestyle of the Burmese Buddhists, dominated by monks for sure. And yet, women have roles, not equal roles, but they do have religious roles in Burma. They're not fully ordained. Uh, sometimes they're considered about one-tenth uh, the value of the monks. But, but there are many. There are said to be 60,000 nuns in Burma today. And um, they do have enough to eat, though, uh, and they do get education, and conditions are really improving. A lot of young women are choosing monastic life, for example. Um, who would have thought this in the modern age? Um, this is um, Aung San Suu Kyi, who is probably the most famous Buddhist woman in the world. But she's come under a lot of criticism because in her political role, she has really failed to fully recognize the abuses against the Rohingya people. And so she has been um, 
her some of her rewards have been rescinded i mean awards have been rescinded and it's rather disappointing to see that she has not spoken out more um to protect the human uh, human rights of the rohingya um her father was great uh, father of the nation a great uh, democracy advocate she's met with leaders all around the world highly respected for her principled stance uh, during the Saffron Revolution. Um, uh, and that was a horrific time and people, monks are, and former monks are still in, in jail. A lot of democracy advocates are still in jail in, in Burma today. So, so here is to point out the fact that some Buddhists are now backing a Buddhist nationalism and the oppression of minorities, which really seriously immediately needs to be addressed. Thanks for your patient listening. <laughs>